In the vast blind eternities, one plane outshines all else as a beacon of civilization, a paragon of cultural and architectural advancement. A sprawling metropolis extends to the horizon in all directions, an endless cityscape whose innumerable spires cast shadows over massive cobbled streets and vibrant promenades. A constant buzz like bees of millions of lives mingling rises from dense population centers. The city dominates all aspects of life and closes all levels of society to the point that it and the plane bear a shared name. It's a place of wonder, of danger and opportunity that fills with awe those who behold it. This is the Plane of Ravnica. Hey lore lovers, my name's Eric with the Lorebarians YouTube channel and welcome to the first of a three-part video series explaining the Plane of Ravnica in MTG's multiverse and the ten guilds engaged in constant intrigue against another to assert primacy over the metropolis. This video will focus on the plane itself, the locations, cultures, and desires woven into its fabric, then briefly touch on key moments in Ravnica's storied past. The remaining videos will scrutinize more closely the ten two-colored guilds under whose sway events unfold. But before we begin, I want to give a huge shout out to my patrons over on Patreon. Their support helps the channel grow and improve. Alright, let's dive in. Ravnica is a plane of the multiverse that harbors the eponymous city, but the two are inextricably linked. A megapolis that plasters its cosmopolitan presence across the known lands. All that transpires here does so within the confines of this plain white city. To say Ravnica is immense is a gross simplification of the multitudes of buildings, causeways, towers, streets, markets, gardens, ruins, and alleys that meld into a dizzying kaleidoscope which suffocates the individual amidst the rushing crush of billions. To truly see all the city has would take even the longest lived creature several lifetimes. It's a maze of danger and opportunity a pulse of vibrant existence that captivates all with promise and mystery. This notion is captured in the striking beauty of Farseek, which illustrates an elf peering off into the horizon and reads, How truly vast this city must be, that I have traveled so far and seen so much, yet never once found the place where the buildings fail. Ravnica's seething flow of humanity, interwoven with multiplex other races, is amorphous and requires structure that dominates both the city and its management. And despite its interconnectedness, Ravnica's differing developmental zones bestow unique features, unique personalities. One zone may hold cramped tenements and broken cobbled streets, another filled with luscious vegetation, and yet another coursing with waterways born of an underground lake. These are given life through the illustrations of Ravnica's basic land cards. The city is largely divided into ten geographical districts arranged radially from Ravnica center as our spokes on a wheel. In the center stands the old city, a metropolitan hub around which all activity stirs. A region of great import, it's distinguished for having as its heart the peak of an ancient mountain unconquered by civilization's reaching grasp. Many offices, halls, and memorials intersperse the city's streets and spires. As one ventures from the center, they follow paths to one of the ten districts beyond. Each district is massive in its own right, replete with all the crowded aspects of city life and large enough to further divide into precincts, neighborhoods, and streets. Little is known about the various districts save the tenth, a powder keg for Ravnican events and where much of its story unfolds as the ten guilds battle for dominance while intermingling with the city's population. The tenth district houses each guild's primary headquarters, locations of grandeur to inspire love, fear, dominance, and to recruit future generations of guild members. They're on display in the illustrations of cards such as Sunhome, Fortress of the Legion, and Vitu Ghazi, the City Tree. These rise impressively from the first precinct within the 10th district, of which five other precincts remain. The others denote areas of industry, of business and fashion, of science and technology. Connecting all of a 10th district in an endless flow of scuffling foot traffic is the beautiful, open, Transguild Promenade, a symbol of neutrality in a city riven by factitious politics. Innumerable vendors, crafters, artisans, and hawkers line impressive Tin Street where they peddle wares mundane and exotic, illustrated in Tin Street Market. 
Despite the plain's oppressive urbanization, there exist wildlands resistant to Ravnica's encroachment, as well as lush, tamed gardens. The Planechase card, Selesnia Loft Gardens, highlights a nature cultivated to stimulate inner calm and insight. And the flavor text of Urban Utopia hints upon this idea, stating, Ravnica's diversity produces blossoms of opinion in a rich soil of perspectives. Green belts and causeways of thick growth are found in small pockets throughout the city's districts. Roots dig deep, and vines reach high to upend buildings to reclaim for nature large tracts. These regions support verdure unbound, and many species can be found from brush striders to the stags found within the sentient forest of Axbane, to predatory beasts and implacable worms. The wasteland of stone just beyond 10th district, known as the Rubble Belt, is haven to raiders and marauders, as well as the more dangerous of Ravnica's fauna, such as the Ripscale Predator and Rubble Belt Maka. The Utvara Reclamation Zone is another wilderness that suffered much desolation throughout its history. Guilds lead minor efforts to resettle, but they are met with rage and dragonfire, as we see with the terrifying Utvara Hellkite. Beneath the sprawling city, hidden under earth and stone, where the dim glint of sunlight rarely penetrates, lies Ravnica's dark undercity. Beautifully illustrated in the Plains Chase card Undercity Reaches, this region represents the city's past, the foundation upon which it stands, the first spires and neighborhoods that were with time stranded in the darkness in the name of progress. Now, it's a labyrinth of danger, a stagnant mire of passageways, sewers, rot farms, and ancient necropolis where only pernicious acts are undertaken. The residents of the Undercity are as reprehensible and devious as their environs. They wear this badge with honor and share a mutual disgust towards the surface dwellers above. A thick shroud of fear in the unknown blankets the Undercity. Those daring enough to slice through it uncover Ravnica's oldest mausoleums and ancient past on display in the grotesque Grand Ossuary, where millions of remains lie. Deeper still are several massive, hollow craters filled with brackish water of the plain's subterranean oceans. A network of underground rivers, lakes, and waterways surges beneath the city that had for centuries remained hidden from the surface. Strange, benthic species and creatures of myth ride the currents of this aquatic world. They appear in cards like Mesmerizing Benthid and Coral Commando, whose flavor text reads, Few Ravnikans are aware of the vast reefs in the world's hidden ocean. Far beneath the great sinkholes, where the light is blue and dim, merfolk tend the coral labyrinths that feed the benthic ecosystem. Guild-controlled sinkholes, known as Zonots, pierce this realm and allow slivers of light to illuminate these waters. Beyond the material world lies the ethereal realm of Agrim, also known as the Ghost Quarter. This chilling haunt was a blight upon Ravnica, an unnatural zone born of fractured magic that prevented the spirits of the departed to unite with the Aether. Trapped, they turned restless and menacing, claiming the cold stone ruins as their own. In recent history, the magic had been undone and the spirits freed from their earthly prison to unite once more in the afterlife. Now that the city has been explored in brief, it's time to walk the streets and uncover Ravnican culture. The beating heart of the plain, what supports billions of lives, what offers stability, guidance, promise and protection is the organization of 10 guilds bound to another by the mystical and ancient guild pact document that prescribes their interactions. A strong force emanating from the document ensures no guild breaks its guidelines. The guilds and their pact are unavoidable, interwoven into the city's very nature. They dominate all aspects of society from law and justice to science and research to community and religion. A symbolic motif apparent throughout Ravnica as seen in Tome of the Guild Pact and Glass of the Guild Pact whose flavor text reads, Counterbalanced forces sustain this city, no faction above others. A beautiful idea. To remove from Ravnica its guilds would be to reduce the plane to nothingness. Each guild is associated with two colors of mana, and each assumes a vital role within Ravnican society. They'll be discussed at length in follow-up videos, but they're as follows. Blue and white-aligned Azorius Senate, legislative and bureaucratic body of government, White and red aligned Boros Legion, the standing army, Ravnica's sword and shield. Red and black aligned Cult of Rakdos, hedonistic labor force and entertainment. 
black and green Golgari swarm, leaders of food production and recyclers of waste, green and white Selesnia conclave, a religious and conservationist communal body, the white and black Orzov syndicate, responsible for banking and trade with a corrupted religious front, black and blue House Demir, a network of spies and assassins to thwart the others, the blue and green Simic Combine interested in evolution and genetic experimentation. The blue and red Izzet League of scientists responsible for civic engineering. And the red and green Gruel clans of berserkers and fierce naturalists. A delicate balance is struck between the guilds who just as often conflict with another as they cooperate. The fruits of their connivance on display in Spark Trooper whose text reads, is it designed conductors atop Sunhome charged empty sets of armor that give form to the fluctuating elementals? While Night Vale Predator showcases their aggression towards another. Each guild understands the significance of the guild pact, which binds them to mutual accord, but tempers run short, motives are misunderstood, and opinions differ. Guild interaction is tenable at best, explosive at worst. They fight another to gain superiority in the city. No district is occupied by a single guild, each has spies, outposts and agents stationed across Ravnica, but there are regions of strength possessed by each guild. The ten work toward their own goals and seek to recruit numbers to bolster their presence. Though many Ravnicans are loyal members to a particular guild, there is a large population of unencumbered, free-spirited citizens that hold no allegiance. They are the guildless, mentioned in the flavor text of all for the guilds. When the guilds cooperate, the guildless celebrate their peaceful society. When the guilds clash, the guildless just try to keep out of the way. Most aren't guildless by choice, but because they inhabit regions far from the central hubs of each district. They dwell in rural areas beyond the reach of most guild efforts, and so have been forgotten. Some, however, are disgruntled bands enraged by the hypocrisy, corruption, and bloated bureaucracy that infects the guilds. They see the system as dangerous and ineffectual. A rebellious idealism, known as the Gateless Movement, produced a militant faction that actively resisted the guild's influence. We see this in Renounce the Guilds and hear it in the flavor text of Guild Scorn Ward. The Gateless have risen, the Ten shall fall. They were most active during the events of the Return to Ravnica block. A panoply of races color Ravnica with diversity little elsewhere seen. Numbering among those who walk crowded streets of this plain-wide city are creatures both ordinary and inspired. Humans, elves and goblins are abundant across gilded and guildless alike. Inconspicuous alleyways hide Viashino lizard folk, which we see in Viashino racketeer, vampires like the necropolis regent and pranking devils. Dragons and angels weave through pointed spires along the skyline, alongside the rarer sphinx or rock. Hidden in rotten sewers and grim undercity avenues, gorgons like the Corros de Gorgon seek lost treasures, zombies shamble from loose earth, horrors slink in the shadows, and insectoid crawl chitter across stinking detritus. Merfolk, leviathans, and genetically engineered crasis lurk in the depths beneath the city. The list of races found is staggering and nearly inexhaustible. As we'll see in following videos, different races are attracted to the unique virtues and vices of the guilds, gathering in large numbers within a guild that matches their own preferences. But as a whole, fewer places in the blind eternities are as enriched as Ravnica. But how did the city come to blanket an entire world? What is the magical guild pact and how does it maintain balance across the guilds? What all has occurred in these storied streets? To answer, we must step far back into time and uncover Ravnica's history. The plains lore is deep as its buried oceans, boundless as its far horizons. It extends back more than 10 millennia to a time of ancient barbarism and atrocity. Before civilization, Ravnica existed as a wild land, riven by internecine and interminable conflict. War waged bloody in a tribal society that extolled brutality. Such devastation was unsustainable, a fact realized by the Sphinx and Planeswalker Azor. Rather than witness the death of his home plane, Azor acted and brought a summit meeting between ten of the most influential factions. Using great powers of hieromancy, order and justice, Azor fabricated a magically binding legal document chartered by the summit members. 
the contents of which established a peaceful, orderly society, upon the foundations of which Ravnica could escape intractable war and flourish. This document, known as the Guild Pact, was the plane's greatest hope for survival, a living enchantment cast upon the world to end violence. Each leader present signed. They came to be remembered through history as the parents, or founders of what will be Ravnica's ten guilds. This is highlighted in the illustration of Pillar of the Parents, which showcases each guild's insignia and enlightens us to the history within its flavor text. Built on the very ground where the Ten signed the Guild Pact, the tower is a monument to the past and a reminder of who holds power in the present. The Guild Pact's magic was subtle but permeating and all-powerful. It steered guilds from another's affairs, prevented dissolution of structure, and navigated most conflicts that arose. Still, love shared between the guilds was slight, and as they shepherded their nascent society, feuds capped in violence broke out occasionally. Collectively, Azor's plan succeeded and safeguarded Ravnica from desolation, establishing a civilization that would grow unbridled to extend across the entire plane. The great lawbringer and his document are celebrated each year with festivals, illustrated in the card Festival of the Guild Pact. Under the Guild Pact, Ravnica City grew upward and outward, a massive metropolitan complex that consumed more land until 10,000 years later it encompassed the plain. Any remembrance of the land that was lost to time. Ravnica's peaceful idol was shattered violently around the decamillennial celebration of the Guild Pact signing. The vampire and guild leader of House Demir, Zedek, attempted a coup to destroy the Guild Pact and usurp control of the city. He nearly succeeded, but was arrested by the Boros agent Agris Kos for his crimes. Unknown to all, this created a paradoxical loophole in the document. House Demir's purpose was to oppose the other guilds, and it couldn't be held from its duty. This triggered a mystical cascade that tore apart both Guild Pact and its binding magic. Violence and unrest consumed Ravnica. Many guilds disbanded or were forcefully deposed by guildless rioters harboring long-term resentments. Lawlessness and hysteria prevailed during this time of interregnum, auspiciously similar to life on the plain before the pact. Without the guilds to enforce the document, and without its hieromancy, disorder reigned. In this strife, the Izzet Perrin and guild master Niv Mizzet observed patterns in the plane's ley lines, pored over ancient texts, and performed experiments that led to one conclusion. Azor had installed failsafes to reinstate the guild pact should it fall to ruin. The pattern of mana ley lines crisscrossing Ravnica's streets formed the implicit maze a test of cooperation and solidarity between the guilds, the outcome of which would decide if a new guild pact could indeed be drafted or if civilization was too far gone, resulting in complete destruction under the supreme verdict to wipe clean the slate. Elementals like the Maze Glider and Sentinel stood to both defend the implicit maze and guide the guilds in its successful completion. Each guild sent a representative to participate in the maze's running. But if not for Planeswalker Jace Bellerin's intervention, they would have failed and unleashed the devastating verdict. Bellerin used mind magic to control all present. His influence established a new guild pact, a living guild pact, manifest in himself. He controlled the powers of order and justice encapsulated in the new charter. Ravnica was spared anarchy and bloodshed, but only for a time. A far greater threat loomed menacingly on the horizon. Elder Dragon and Planeswalker Nicol Bolas gathered power and forces to reclaim his supreme godlike status. Decades of grim machinations soon culminated in an explosive climax, the center of which falls directly upon Ravnica. The first phase of Bolas's War of the Spark begins with the infiltration by sleeper agents of all levels of Ravnican society. His minions gain sway over nearly all the guilds and bend them to his dark designs. Dovin Bond commands the Azorius Senate. Vraska rules as Queen of the Golgari. Domri Raid stirs the Gruul clans to chaos. Ral Zarek creates the Interplanar Beacon. Kaya Kassir is contracted to assassinate the Ghost Council of Verzova. Like a master puppeteer, Bolas pulls the strings of his often unwitting agents in a pattern he alone recognizes to create instability. The Guild Pact. The bedrock of Ravnican society once more falls to ruin amidst panic and confusion. 
Bolas launches his next phase, the interplanar invasion of Ravnica by his undead Dreadhorde legions of lazotep plated zombies from the plain of Amonkhet, seen in Dreadhorde invasion. The War of the Spark brings desolation to Ravnica. The Hall of the Guild Pact is obliterated, the ley lines binding its magic are severed, thousands of streets, districts and plazas lie demolished, millions of lives are lost. This is illustrated in cards like Ravnica at War and Emergence Zone, the flavor text of which states, The planar bridge opened over the chamber of the Guild Pact, reducing the symbol of Ravnica's endurance to rubble. The combined effort of the Gatewatch and several other planeswalkers spared Ravnica from oblivion, and the aftermath of the war saw Bolas defeated, his statues toppled, and the birth of Niv Mizzet as the new living Guild Pact. Much time was needed for a hobbling Ravnica to convalesce. Districts required rebuilding, and several seats of power remained empty within the guilds. It was a time to lick wounds, but again, Ravnica was denied its rest. After a brief recovery, the plane fell under the nefarious thrall of New Phyrexia, another interplanar threat led by Elish Norn, Mother of Machines, and bent on conquest, on subjugation through blood and oil, until all are united as one. The recently completed Gorgon Vraska returned to her home plane as Harbinger of Death swelled by the ranks of millions of Phyrexian abominations. Oil fell rank from darkened skies, completion surged through the population, and the earth fractured as the Undercity rose to consume collapsed spires. The Golgari Swarm and Simic Combine converted to Phyrexia's dogma. The Demir vanished, and huge blows were dealt to the remaining guilds, yet Ravnica endured. Bolstered by guild pack magic and animated paragons, Niv Mizzet led the denizens in resistance. Fighting was bitter and deadly, but Ravnica stood undaunted, once more emerging the victor over a force from beyond the blind eternities that threatened its existence. Victory, however, was Pyrrhic. Many guilds have dissolved entirely, others are husks of their former selves. Fear and instability grip the debris-strewn avenues. The fate of the plane stands precarious its future unknown. What will its dynamic shape into? Will the guild pact endure, or will the plane once more descend into chaos, bound to relive the ancient days of barbarism? Will the city rebuild its edifice and spires, or crumble to oblivion? Only time will tell. Thanks so much for watching and listening to this video on the plane of Ravnica Explained, and stay tuned for the next parts of the series discussing the 10 guilds that control its fate. Now I want to hear from you. Let me know your thoughts on this plain wide city, what lies in the future, as well as suggestions for future videos in the comments below. And if you're a fan of lore and storytelling, be sure to subscribe to the channel, check out the podcast or the blog where content is uploaded frequently. I want to thank my amazing supporters over on Patreon who make all of this possible, and I couldn't do it without their fantastic support. If you'd like to become a lore luminary for access to me, a great community, written scripts, and early video drops, head to patreon.com slash the lorebrarians to learn more. Until next time, go forth and explore the lore.